hello chaps. Um, so I've brought you here to talk a bit about the startle response or the red light response that is often referred to in the somatics movement um, field. So what is the startle response? This is a response that all us um, mammals I think have, especially us humans, when we hear say a loud bang and our bodily um, reflex is to contract and roll in, like we're protecting ourselves from the loud noise. So this startle response or the red light um, response or reflex, it's about the front of our bodies contracting. So the hip flexors want to contract to bring the thighs up, the arms roll in, the shoulders roll in, we kind of sink in the chest, abdominals tighten, rib cage drops down because of the abdominal tightening and the head juts forward sort of downward and forward. And this also makes me think of in this, these times of the COVID um, situation we're all in, we're now more, more than ever on laptops and computers and the forward head posture <laughs> on the phone, on the laptop, is also moving into that startle response. So there's a practice now I want to show you that is a well-known um, exercise in the somatics movement field. So I wanted to share it with you and my lovely email subscribers. And the idea here is to use pandiculation to help ease us out of this startle response. So what is pandiculation? So if you were, read my previous um, email, I had a whole thing about pandiculation. So the idea is, so pandiculation is the natural ah, response that you have every time you wake up, you have a stretch. Animals do it also. And this is the nervous system's way to prepare you for movement. So it contracts and then releases. So using this, this pandiculation method, we're going to further um, move into this startle response to then mindfully, with total awareness, release out of it. So stretching, we do a lot in yoga. So if someone comes with our classes like this in the startle response, maybe our go-to would be to stretch them in the opposite way. And this isn't necessarily wrong, or it can be useful, but um, sometimes the, we need to do more work um, getting people's, our own nervous systems on board to a state of uh, ease so that there is an appropriate amount of stretch that can even occur. So pandiculation is more um, retraining the nervous system to let go of certain contractions that we've they've kind of gone into the subconscious, we don't even know we're doing it. Like last night I realised I had my shoulders up by my ears and I thought, oh, how long have I had my shoulders up by my ears for? It wasn't until I consciously knew it that I could do something about it and with awareness. So this is what this practice is going to do, is to help us move away from this rounded, contracted, forward head posture, which we all have to certain degrees and to move more into a, a state of ease and openness and um, freedom of movement. Okay, using pandiculation, bringing attention to further contracting in that starter response, then mindfully unraveling. But all of this to a comfortable level, please don't overdo it, because it's I think it's quite strong. So what you need to do is come to your back in constructive rest, palms face up, feet underneath the knees and then use an exhale to begin to drop the navel down start to bring the lower back to the floor so posteriorly tilting the pelvis so feeling the hips kind of moving up drop the rib cage down towards the navel and notice that that picks your shoulders forward as you roll the palms in roll the shoulders in and as you do that your chin moves up to the ceiling and then exhale slowly, unwind, take a moment, breathe, let go. And then exhale, repeat, so drop the navel, posteriorly tilt the pelvis, meaning lower back to the floor, ribs glue to the hips, roll the palms in, the shoulders roll in, and then notice what happens to your head and your neck as you do that. And then exhale, once again, unravel, let everything soften. And you could repeat that maybe 
three times or five times. Uh, maybe this could be something you do with your students or in before at the beginning of your practice as a means to check in, notice um, what you're doing in your body suit. <laughs> so it can be useful, I think, to, to arrive at your mat in your home practice and if you're teaching, let your students arrive, which I know you will do, but with it, sometimes it's nice to think of it differently so you can have people lay down in constructive rest or shavasana um, to begin with and then get them to notice certain landmarks of their body and does one leg feel longer than the other? Does one hip feel higher or slightly twisted? Does one shoulder feel higher? Do your shoulders... So bring awareness to... Help people bring awareness to their holding patterns. And that's kind of step one of how then we can work to unravel and bring ease to those areas and then the whole bodily system. Especially with this startle um, response, this contracting, rolling in. I would stand up, but you can't see me. <laughs> um, it will have an effect on the diaphragm. If, the, if this, the, the abdominal wall is very contracted and tight, the diaphragm won't be able to do its thing. That'll have an effect on the pelvic floor diaphragm um, and the synchronicity there. So breathing is really um, affected. And if we're not breathing well, with our cells aren't being fed as much oxygen as they need. And then we feel tired because unconsciously we're working really hard to maintain a posture that isn't helpful in any way, apart from when we actually need it in a response. So they're there for a reason, but we sort of get stuck there and they become, they move from the conscious into the unconscious. And this is the idea of what yoga does, somatic practices do, they bring consciousness to the unconscious. And this is where we can start the work of um, undoing and um, healing. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, yeah, so I didn't make the ex exercise up. Um, it is a well-known somatics movement practice. Um, I just thought I'd share it with you guys if you haven't heard of it and let me know how you get on with it. And if you um, offer it to your students, let me know how they feel about it too. I'm really, in really interested. Okay, so I'll see you in the next newsletter. Um, I hope you're okay and being safe and finding joy when you can, moving bo your body when you can. And yeah, hopefully we'll be out of this soon. <laughs> okay, lots of love. Be well.